Adventures of Sonic Episode 7 Trail of the Missing Tails Gee, I wonder if Tails will go missing. We start out with someone who has a cringe-worthy lisp saying oddly happily that Robotnik banished him to the world of confusion, or warp of confusion. It looks like he's trapped in another dimension, and he wants revenge, seeming to work on an invention. Wait, wait why would Robotnik make up or send him to a zone that has materials where he can invent stuff in the first place? This is like a lamer version of the Zone of Silence. After some time is wasted with predictable slapstick, Coconuts hears Sonic running around. After Sonic somehow pulls the sun down to him and it smiles at him, which is very stupid, he smells a chili dog and Tails is confused that there is one out here. Sonic says that it's a Robotnik chili dog and he has to get the recipe. Wait, why? Wouldn't that be horrible? Tails sounds happy when he says that it has to be a trap, which is bad acting. Sonic wants to get the chili dog himself, and he leaves Tails alone in the process, but since the title of the episode seems to imply he'll go missing, I guess this is what gets him kidnapped. It's probably annoying because leaving someone behind might keep them safe, but it could also get them in danger too because you aren't there to protect them. Sonic presses buttons on the machine of the robots to hit them with their own heavy objects. Somehow, despite all of those objects falling on them, they still weren't destroyed. And hopefully when an explosion happened, that was enough- No, of course not! Somehow, Scratch was undamaged enough to kidnap Tails. So the whole plot shouldn't have happened. Tails' is acting when he calls Sonic for help is pathetic. Is Tails' only purpose in the show to get kidnapped? He's reminding me of Princess Elise! Scratch and Grounder get tied up with the rope they tied up Tails with, and Sonic wastes time teasing them before spin-dashing around them to create a tornado, which magically frees Tails from the ropes for no reason. Then another safe is dropped on Scratch. I wish they were killed off from that. Sonic fortunately scolds Tails for not waiting back there like he was told to, but since Force lightheartedness, he eases up on him really quick with no real consequences, as Tails isn't sad for a long time. The nerd guy spots Tails, and predictably Tails goes missing the next day. Wait, Sonic and Tails sleep outside, out in the open, on beds they somehow have? So one, they're hobos. I guess that makes sense, since they'd have no hideouts from Robotnik without Knothole and would have to live on the run. But wouldn't they get sick from being outside in the rain all day? Would they have to find caves to sleep in? Would Sonic burrow underground with a spin dash to make his own cave, and it wouldn't crumble from above him? Wouldn't the civilians that admire Sonic so much allow Sonic to crash in their couch? And second, I guess I should just assume that Sonic gets all of his materials by stealing. Where else would they come from? Do the civilians pay him reward money for being a hero? I guess you could buy his materials with that, but even then, without a home to sleep in, he shouldn't be able to have a place to store his materials in. Anyway, Sonic accuses Robotnik of kidnapping Tails, and somehow Scratch and the gang keep attacking the dust after he leaves them it, when you'd think they would all be able to see he's not there anymore, and that dust shouldn't remain there for such a long time. I was thinking it'd be a brilliant reality ensues moment because Sonic was standing there like an idiot, talking about how he was worried Tails ran away from a falling out with him, right in front of Robotnik, and then he got attacked. But no, I guess that'd be too dark and edgy for the show. Sonic finds Tails' footprints as Robotnik struggles to share his Eggmobile with Scratch in the gang. Why doesn't he just make them have their own Eggmobiles if they're constantly his robot sidekicks? Well, maybe he doesn't trust them not to destroy them unintentionally because they're incompetent, but he never says that, and he should still make his Eggmobile bigger. Somehow, Sonic indeed didn't notice the robots. Scratch's acting when he says he's the leader is terrible. I hated that when Scratch loudly talked near Sonic, Sonic didn't hear him at all. That's always horribly forced. Sonic goes to a weird looking place and gets swallowed up by a purple metal thing, and is welcomed by the nerd to the world of confusion, where Tails has been kidnapped twice in one episode. What is it with the show and giving characters horribly annoying voices? It being a cartoon is no excuse for annoying the hell out of the audience. What incentive did this nerd guy, who is victimized by Robotnik, have to kidnap Tails, one of Robotnik's enemies? 
If he could get people into his zone, you'd think he would just leave if he wants to. Since there is an exit, then you can just leave through the exit. He laughs insanely and brags about what he did to Tails. Okay, he wants to escape from here. That just proves my point. An exit would be an entrance. An, en an entrance would be an exit. This makes no sense. So Robotnik vanished in here because he's insane. I guess him being insane is why he didn't escape sooner. And interestingly, he's Robotnik's cousin, even though he looks pink. So it's hard to tell that he's a human. I guess it's got to see that Robotnik has a human relative. But once again, there's no reason whatsoever that this plot should have happened. Because Robotnik should have killed this loony or put him in a proper prison. Not gone out of his way to put him here. He's such an annoying character with the way he talks that he might just ruin the episode. Or at least all the scenes with him in it, which is most of them. We have an overly saccharine scene where Teal says he'd never run away from his best friend and Sonic says he's his and yada yada. It's ironic, Robotnik technically helped Sonic by creating a distraction fighting with his cousin. And this lets Sonic free Tails. The Neto cousin uses his machines to try to attack Sonic, who's pulling Tails along with a rope around his chest. They run away from some fish, and Robotnik calls his cousin a worthless wimp, saying he's doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong, you worthless wimp! I remember hearing this line from somewhere before, so I appreciated it more seeing the context behind it. Scratch runs away from the various dangers in the zone, and then him and the gang turn against Robotnik after being all muscled up from being hit by something in the zone. I guess that was the cousin's thing. It's frustrating seeing this because if they hadn't wasted all that time talking to Robotnik, taunting him, they would have won. Sonic spin edged at Robotnik, or I guess something below him, to send him away and escape the zone with Tails. Tails hugs Sonic, and he picks him up for once. I'm patronized as Sonic says that Robotnik and his cousin will be stuck with each other for a while. Okay, so this makes the second instance of horrible negative continuity. There's probably never going to be a proper explanation for why Robotnik escapes this zone. Especially with his turned against him robots with him and inexplicably not trying to kill him anymore. Because the episode lazily ends without resolving it, we'll, we'll never know how it was resolved. It would be fine if at least one of his main robots was back on Mobius and could save him feasibly. Why do coconuts contribute by being here anyways? And why are these his main robots? Why are they constantly around when they're so incompetent and should have been scrapped and replaced already? It feels like everything about the show is forced. The disguises the incompetent robot minions for an evil robot-making dictator? They're both very fundamental things and don't make any sense. And the Sonic Says message makes no sense. Tails is lost, so he gives the phone operator his phone number? But how would that help? How would anyone know where he was? He's here, not at home. We just established Tails and Sonic don't have a proper home and sleep outside, so they wouldn't have an area code. And even ignoring that, I don't understand why this message would help if you're lost. You're lost. They, you're, you're lost. They call your home phone number. Well, now what? What are they gonna do to find you? It would have worked if they knew exactly where in the world the phone booth was from, like, GPS, and could give Tails directions home. But again, where is home? This episode was going somewhere good, but unfortunately it was all derailed by the annoying cousin of Robotnik whose voice and way of speaking irritated me to no end. Tails got kidnapped twice in one episode, which is almost as bad as Elise, but I was expecting him to be missing for the whole episode. Scratch should have never been able to function properly after all of those heavy objects were dropped on him. He's not established to be invincible, so the first kidnapping never should have happened. Not that it contributed to the overall plot anyways, you could have cut it out. It was never established that Robotnik had to fix the robots after the slapstick, so why were they in the rest of the episode? They contributed nothing. The whole episode never should have happened because of this and because it runs off a bonkers idea that a crazed world dictator wouldn't have had his cousin executed or put in a prison that he wouldn't make his own personal home he could break out of. Not to mention we never see how Robotnik could have possibly escaped from the zone alive. And the sweet moments between Sonic and Tails are very underwhelming and half-hearted to me. They just say a few lines, hold hands while Sonic is smirking instead of having an actually likable smile. 
and one hug that Sonic doesn't bother to hug back during. But by far the worst thing about the episode was just the cousin in general. I hated him so much.